Hey guys, so before we go any further, I want to go ahead and squash this bug that just keeps popping up when we run tests. And uh, here it is right now with duplicate key violates unique constraint. And I was thinking a lot about this and I was testing out a lot of different things. And I know the cause of this now and uh, there's a few different solutions we can do to uh, try to remedy this. So what I think is happening is we're having a race condition. We have a race condition, obviously. Um, well, it wasn't obvious to me at first, but because it happens sometimes and sometimes it works, depending on the order that things are getting run, we get this error popping up. And so that's what's known as a race condition if you don't know what that is. Now, if we come over to our ORM config, we can see we are uh, dropping the schema. So here's, here's what I think is happening. Um, whenever we create a connection, we're dropping the schema if we're creating a test connection. So we're creating a test connection here because we're in the testing environment. We're also doing it when we do a me test um, and we're doing it when we do a register test. So for every single test that we run, we're dropping the database. So we're dropping the database a total of one, two, three, four times. And these tests are running um, all in parallel. So if one test drops the database in the middle of another person's uh, test, then there's going to be a problem. It's going to reset and break everything. So that's what I think is happening. Um, I'm not 100% sure, um, but it seems to make sense. And this seems to be just like a, a straight up bug. So one way that we can solve this is by stopping the uh, parallel runs of the test. So we can do this with the just and run them sequentially. Here's the stack overflow by passing in this parameter. So uh, we can go ahead and try this. And I think this is going to be ended up the solution I'm going to go with. But I also want to discuss uh, some other ones we could take. So we add that. And now they should all run in order. And there is also another big problem. So if I come over to my index.typescript, you'll notice I am importing .env in this reflect metadata. Uh, but we don't actually use index.typescript um, in our testing. So this .env and this, these two files are not being imported. So I need to actually just move them to start server because start server needs them. So now at the top of start server, we're importing these two files that it needs. Um, and now if we're testing, uh, and we only include the start server uh, module, these files still get imported. Whereas before they weren't because they were just an index. But if we start um, index, if we start uh, run our server regular, it's going to call index.typescript, which is going to call start server, which will import these. So we're still good. So that was another small thing possibly causing problems in the mix. And uh, we can try just control C, yarn test. And um, we can see if this does go ahead and run the tests okay. And I'm just going to run them all. Um, but there's one kind of big downside to doing this. Uh, is, and you'll notice it just they run sequentially. Cool, it all passed. Um, and that is it's slower, right? Because we're running one test after the other, after the other. And really, this is my least favorite option, um, is just doing it like this. Because I can see this taking... Uh, basically, it's just going to take longer and longer and longer as we add more and more tests. They can't run in parallel, which is unfortunate. Um, but here's one way we can try getting around these things. So I talked about earlier that uh, the race condition was happening because we were dropping the schema, right, um, for every single test. There's really um, no way around that. If we're dropping the schema in some of these tests, it's going to break the other tests because they're trying to touch the database. So we cannot drop the schema on every single test, right? So we have four tests. We only drop the schema in our global setup. Uh, and that's one way to do it. Uh, but this will introduce a new problem, and that is uh, the state is going to be shared. So for example, in my register test over here, I register a user, right? We can see right here a request uh, and mutation right here, um, or it's I guess right here is 
the register mutation. I guess we register a couple users. Uh, but somewhere in here we register a user, right? That means this user is now available and can be accessed by the login test and whatnot. And uh, in that same vein, it can mess things up. So if we're using the same login, uh, the name, which I don't know if we are, um, I think I changed them. Nope, we, so for this is a perfect example. So here we uh, are registering a user called Tom at Bob.com, and we're doing the same thing in our login test, um, and this will cause a problem, right? Because we're trying to create two users in the same uh, database. So one way to avoid this is to be very cautious about this and not um, use the same email across tests and whatnot. Um, but I think it's all just, I think it's just like a bad way to do things because we really want to isolate each test and have it have a fresh um, database on every single uh, test, which really just leaves us with the previous solution, which was to drop the database on every single test, uh, which is unfortunate and makes it really slow. The other solution um, I had was uh, I was thinking about and uh, playing with transactions. So when we create the Typeform connection here, so in our test over here, uh, we create a user, right? So I could create this user in a transaction, and then I could just keep this transaction for this test, and then I roll it back when we're done. And for those of you that are not familiar with transactions, uh, basically it's an isolated thing. Uh, where if we make a change in the transaction, it does not affect the whole database uh, until the transaction is committed. Uh, and you can also roll back this transaction um, and then nothing's affected in the database. Uh, but that didn't work for a different reason. And that's be we'd create the user in the transaction, right? And then we would, I don't know, request something from our server and our server would not be using that transaction so it would just cause a, a mess because the server is not using the transaction but I am using the transaction here um, so that wouldn't really work so I think the really only option is I w if I want to do parallel tests is to have them all um, touching the database and then I just have to be very careful not to have one test um, mess up another test uh, doing something, I don't know, like I'm deleting a user that that user is using or whatnot, or that test needs. Uh, so that's one way. I think for now, I'm just going to leave it like um, so, where we just run them all. Um, and maybe I'll consider uh, doing it like I said before, where they're all basically running at the same time, affecting the database, and then just being careful. But it kind of feels bad to me doing it like that. Uh, but I kind of want to just like talk about this and see what you guys think. Um, what are your opinions on it? What would you recommend? I think what I'll do for the rest of this series, unless you guys have a brilliant idea, which would be great, is I'll just use this flag uh, and the test should have no problem passing. Uh, but that's it for this video, guys. Thanks for watching, and we'll get back to uh, the middleware uh, in the next video.